Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shaking Hands. I'm your host, Jack Moran. You can find me on Instagram at Jack Riley Moran. Today on the episode, we have Abigail King, um, a functional nutritionist. How are we doing today? Doing well. Yeah, I just talked to some clients this morning. Little afternoon podcast, talk with Jack. So we're we'll doing well. Getting the day started off right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about like what you do. Give me like a little bit of a background. Yeah. So I'm a functional nutritionist. I have my master's in nutrition and functional medicine. I'm a certified nutrition specialist. Um, but really, what I do on a day to day, I work with clients one on one. I have a virtual practice, Abigail King Functional Nutrition, um, and I deal with a lot of clients that struggle with gut issues, gut imbalances, hormone issues, struggle with their nutrition, kind of chronic inflammation sort of pictures. So I work through their case and help them be better. How did you become interested in that? Why did you enter that profession? So how far back do we want to go? I mean, I... Start from the beginning, we got the time. Yeah, we got the time. So, I mean, I grew up with a mom that loved to cook. So that's really where a lot of it kind of started I was always kind of in the kitchen with her helping her cook just innately kind of liked gravitated towards healthier food which was kind of rare come to find out with my friends wondering why I'd always been just like eat an apple or whatnot but it really just came from my parents being good role models um so and then fast forward I went to college of Charleston um I graduated with a BS in public health and I mean I thought through college I wanted to maybe do you know, go through medical school. My brain is more like sciencey. That stuff just kind of makes sense to me. Um, learning how like the body works and all. So I uh, actually got an internship summer going into senior year with a naturopath here in Charleston, naturopathic doctor. Do you know what that is? I'm guessing <laughs> it's like natural medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's basically like a medical doctor, but they're trained in more nutrition, kind of root causes approach, uh, um, identifying imbalances in the body. Instead of treating symptoms. Yeah, or... yeah. So I um, interned with her, and she really just opened my eyes to really holistic health medicine, how food can really change the trajectory of someone's health. Um, and so after I interned with her for a couple of years, and I thought, okay, do I want to do medical school? Do I want to... Um, you know, be a hospital administrator. I thought that for a minute. Um, but after just seeing how much food lifestyle can really change somebody's like health and well, mental health too, performance, everything, I thought, you know, that's kind of where I want to go. So I got my master's in nutrition while I was working with her and in my clinical hours with under that practice. After I graduated with my master's, I there wasn't really more growth for me in her business. So at that point I was, I decided to start my own business. Really had no intentions to, I kind of just winged it. <laughs> it's working. That's how it goes sometimes. Not right? winging it so much anymore, but a little more strategy to it. But yeah. Fantastic. It's kinda... What's your outlook on like the conventional, like Western medicine approach to mm -hmm. health and wellness? Um, there's a time and a place. Right. They are very important for more like acute issues. So, you know, breaking your bone, heart attack, need brain surgery, tumor, very important. Um, but it's not addressing, not people's health conditions cannot be fixed with a pill or surgery. Um, it goes much deeper than that. Like there's inflammation can be brewing for years. So learning how to like, when I work with my clients, I'm identifying where are these sources of inflammation and where how are we going to put those fires out and how are we going to return balance to your body. And it's not overnight with a quick fix that most people, um, you know, as assume that's what. Well, I should rephrase that. Um, like conventional medicine, it's it's taught people to want a quick quick fix. And that's not what they're getting when they come to somebody like me because we're trying to change their lifestyle and um, prevent them from actually getting to the point where they need that like acute care. 
is there any like one size fits all methodology like for being happy and healthy um or just like fundamentals like that a person should yeah I would say fundamentals I mean I call it that's what I call like my foundations um I have clients that come to me and they want a quick fix but I have to explain to them this is not that sort of scenario and practice like it takes time for the body to heal and you have to focus on the foundations first before jumping to um even like supplements and just fancy things like um IV therapy or whatnot like so the foundations that I like to teach my clients of course is nutrition eating more you know closest to nature just to keep it simple whether you follow whatever diet kind of paradigm philosophy um but just eating closest to nature so making sure your nutrition is dialed sleep are you prioritizing your sleep kind of your sleep wake cycle the same every night um and then making sure you're not deficient anything i really like to have my clients get like regular lab work to make sure we're checking in and watching the trends throughout the years um exercise movement stress component you know the foundations yeah some things are um really widespread when it comes to like treating each person you want to make sure you're addressing each of those foundations and we kind of like i didn't preface this yet on the episode we talked about before like why this is interesting to the podcast is Hmm. i am a firm believer that diet is and you know your the health of your body correlates a lot with your productivity and Mm -hmm. if you're trying to be an entrepreneur um, you need to be extremely productive. So having a good foundation um, is the, you know, building one of the main building blocks for that yeah. productivity. Um, mm-hmm. But so that's kind of, you know, just a preface, like why I think it's very important what you're doing. Um, but you mentioned a couple of times inflammation. Is that something mm-hmm. that you see that's very common? Why is cl- chronic inflammation mm-hmm. a big problem? Mm-hmm. So it's basically well, when when I say inflammation I feel like most people think is just like um like heart disease or diabetes just like these big disease states but there can be like low-grade inflammation that's just making you feel tired or off or just like you know brain foggy not focused so those are all signs that there's an immune shift in your body that's what inflammation is there's certain there's a shift in the immune system that's driving up this inflammation that's causing your symptoms and so inflammation can come from many different sources i always explain this to my clients it can be due to like a deficiency it can be due to a toxicity in the body and imbalance in the body and hormones it can be due to you know gut imbalances and the microbiome there's a lot of pathogenic bugs that are driving up these are causing more inflammatory compounds to be released Um, stress is a biggie so whether it's someone that has like anxiety and is perceiving a lot of stress in their environment or if there is a lot of like situational stress going on, you know, that's driving up inflammation. So try, you have to identify all those sources and realize that it can be coming from a lot of different sources. And then you begin to kind of work on each of those camps. So if I had to go through like coming as a client and I can think of like, I'm trying to think of like the issues that an entrepreneur would be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Like, let's start with mood. What would be the first Mm -hmm. thing that you would look at? And like, is there kind of a synopsis of where you would, you know, um, Mm -hmm. think would be like the first culprits of that? Like, yeah, issues with mood. So I would think possibly blood sugar imbalance, possibly vitamin D deficiency, possibly B12 deficiency, and then maybe hormones. But I would start with like, easy things first so blood sugar imbalance is the person are they you know waiting till one o'clock to eat they're doing really hard workout in the morning they're breaking their fast with just a bagel you know that's going to disrupt the sugars in your bloodstream and can affect your energy and mood so we're making sure that they're eating properly balanced meals um let's check your vitamin d levels are you close to 60 and 70 because your vitamin d can affect your mood your immune system b12 can affect your energy your mood uh, liver detox which can make you feel like sluggish and then uh, what was the last one i mentioned oh hormones so a lot to talk about there but yeah there could be imbalance in that section too okay so now what about energy like mm-hmm. i'm i'm burning out like halfway through the day mm-hmm. um would that be a lot to do with like the meals that you're having throughout the day and then what would be the, kind of that mm-hmm. like ideal um diet throughout the day um, to support that productivity okay 
So um, you're feeling sluggish throughout the day. That was what this person is feeling. Yep. Or <laughs> burnt out. Burnt, burnt out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So I would actually have a conversation with them about their sleep and recovery. They could be, I mean, and this podcast is geared towards like entrepreneurs, right? High, high yeah. achieving professionals. Probably maybe a little more like type A, you know, they're, yeah, high achievers. They're doing a lot. Are What are they doing to help offset that? And so I talk to a lot of like my clients that are like doctors themselves or lawyers um, trying to explain, okay, you have a lot filling up in this bucket of like that's filling up your stress bucket. Whether it's good stress or not, you're just doing a lot. If it's like a lot of hard workouts and you know, tough conversations with clients, patients, just your workload's intense. What are you doing to help like offset that? Are you making sure that you're getting, you know, adequate sleep? Do we need to do more for recovery? And then of course the food conversation. So what would you be eating? Um, definitely emphasizing adequate protein, especially in your first meal. Like when I'm looking at a client's overall um, nutrition and diet, it can be overwhelming to work on like everything at once. So I really try to kind of reel it back and be like, okay, let's work on your first meal. Um, Cause that really is like most important, whether you have it at 9 a.m. or 11, kind of depends case by case and what's going on with the person. If you're um, implementing any like fasting or time restricted eating, um, but yeah, making sure you're having adequate like protein upon waking or close enough to your workout, making sure you're having adequate fiber with your meals, like whole foods, um, healthy fats. So just making sure they're balanced in that sense. And so you talked and about repeat. Oh, sorry. You're, you said you're talking about sleeping. What are the like minimums for sleep, sleep requirements to have a happy, healthy life, productive life? Yes. So between seven and nine hours, everyone's a little different. Some people don't need as much sleep. You know, their sleep type, chronic type's a little bit different. Um, but what's like the most important principles is the hours that you're getting. But actually what even trumps that is your consistent like sleep wake schedule. So trying to go to bed at the same time every night, whether it's nine or eleven, you know, sticking to that is really important Why for is your that sleep important? pattern. Um, because it helps with the way I don't know if you've ever seen like your circadian uh, rhythm or anything. Is that what Yeah, well yeah, that's part of it too. Your so your circadian rhythm has to do with it's your sleep wake cycle and it's governed by a hormone cortisol and then melatonin. They kind of offset each other so your cortisol rhythm rises or your cortisol rises in the morning about like two hours after waking it should be at its highest point that's what's giving you like your get up and go your energy um and the more fine-tuned your sleep wake cycle is the more um like stronger of a cortisol awakening response you can have you have interesting car it's called and then so your cortisol is high about two hours after waking then it slowly starts to come down and then it should be pretty much zero um around like 10 11 o'clock and then when the sun goes down it triggers melatonin that comes up we get sleepy and go to bed so really it's like following the sun like nature right so we want to sink to what our bodies naturally want to what are the most common bad habits that you see with clients <laughs> most common bad habits well we're talking about my charleston clients <laughs> there's a lot of good food here yeah. social eating drinking finding that balance it's not a bad habit so maybe i shouldn't say that um but late night snacking that's a biggie just like grazing and even just grazing throughout the day not having your substantial like meals that's not a great habit um for multiple reasons for blood sugar for like motility for your microbiome um so, yeah, not having, like, solid meals, grazing a lot. I can think of another one. What do you think about, like, people every single weekend um, getting, you know, breaking their sleep schedule and, uh, and, and ingesting toxins throughout mm -hmm. the weekend and then trying to have a productive week after that? Is there any, like, um, research that would support that being unhealthy? That's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there is just by – um, referring to the whole keep your sleep wake cycle the same. I mean, I'm. It happens to me. It happens to everybody. You know, you're not going to go to sleep. Everything things come up. You go out to a late dinner. You go to a concert. Like whatnot. Like stuff comes up. You just have to know 
okay, what can I do to get back to it? And if you, you know, are more social, you are having more drinks or traveling more, more of the, those sort of stressors, like how can we support your body while doing that? You know, I'm a, a question that I get a lot from like potential clients is, can I like not drink or do I have to not drink on your program? Or can I like, you know, never have sugar on your program? Like, no, this is like a lifestyle change. Like we want to create a healthy lifestyle, but then again, you got to have fun. So <laughs> you got, there's a balance and how to support your body through those challenges. Right. What is your program? Like what are the, the baseline of your program? So all I have a three and six month program basically where uh, clients start with the initial 75 minute consult. I go through their history, health history. I go over um, their labs. We talk about each of their main concerns and I'm identifying during that session um, what's going on in their body and prioritize how we're going to get them better. Whether it's someone that comes to me with, um, you know, chronic gut issues, IBS, someone that's a, a female that's not cycling, having like hormonal issues, um, somebody that just wants to feel better, they're just feeling sluggish or whatnot. So I kind of prioritize, come up with a plan, then we follow up every other week for 30 minutes through that three or six months. What is like the most recent insight that you've gotten in your field, like that you find interesting, something that you're pursuing or you think is like pretty profound, anything? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think all of the research in um, like resistance training is pretty fascinating. And, you know, most people think weightlifting, resistance training, whatever you want to call it, is just for like, you know, vanity, like body composition kind of goals. But when you work on um, building muscle, maintaining good muscle, having just good muscle health, it has downstream effects for your metabolism because your muscles are the biggest storage of glucose. They hold like a ton of sugar, like glucose, that we get through our food. Um, and it, it sensitizes our cells to this hormone called insulin that's responsible for basically letting glucose into our cells so that we can have the energy um, to perform or whatnot but maintaining good muscle health is good for our meta metabolism like long story short um and for like longevity as we age and getting old i mean people a big risk when you're old i know we're not really worried about it right now but like falling i'm seeing like my grandparents get old and i'm like if only they knew just <laughs> like you know eating good protein and um you know training couldn't have done them wonders yeah, I'm glad you mentioned longevity. Um, that was my next question. Mm -hmm. Have you looked into like biohacking or anything like that? Or mm -hmm. what, what print? What tools are you? I know nothing to? about it. So <laughs> I was hoping you could tell me something. I just know the terminology. Yeah, so I'm not an expert in biohacking realm. Um, so let's see. When I think biohacking, a lot of like the fancy like, tools and equipment and things like that, like the red lights you can get. Um, to help stimulate your mitochondria and like recharge your mitochondria, which are like the energy powerhouses of the cell. Um, as we age, we get our mitochondria decline just because of aging and also things we do age them faster. So red light therapy is kind of a biohacking tool. Okay, I do have a red light, so I guess I am into <laughs> biohacking. Um, what else? Like the um, like peptides, you can inject growth hormone and NAD and all that stuff. I'm not really into that. I'm like I, I work yeah. with clients more on the just foundations. Some of that stuff like wigs me out. I'm like, well, it might be working in the short term, yeah. but we don't know what the long term effects well, are. Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of questions about, well, some of my clients will text me, Abby, what do you think about like NAD? What's um, that again? NAD. Yeah. It stands for a very long um word which i'm not gonna butcher <laughs> <But> <laughs> it is a cofactor for atp okay which is what our mitochondria make which yeah, is energy right. for all our cells so like i said as we get older our mitochondria decline um and it's thought the theory is you supplement with nad you get a iv of nad and it's just it's helping your mitochondria to make atp um i i don't think it's 
the doses that are needed are much higher than what you can get in supplement and the supplement is so expensive. So I just, and it's not quite like a sure thing yet. I want to live longer, which do I do? <laughs> Eat whole foods, um, lift weights, go on walks, be outside, um, have good social connections. Yeah, there's a big social component, right? Yes, yeah. yes. That kind of goes along with like the mental health aspect of it all. What was that uh, documentary called? It was like Blue Zones. Oh, the Blue Zones. Yeah, what do you think Dan of that? Dan Buettner. Um, I think it's great. I think um, Makes sense. it it's opened logical. a lot of people's eyes. I love how, you know, there's a lot of more wellness documentaries on Netflix, whether you agree with all of them or not, but it's just helping people become more aware of, you know, environmental things that can affect your health. How you live your life affects your, your health outcomes. Um, there's one on another one called Hack Your Health on Netflix. It's about the gut microbiome. Hmm. Have you seen that one? It's no. like an hour. It's fascinating. I, the it's worth a watch. Yes. Yeah. It's worth a watch. I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like your definition of success? What are you trying to achieve through your entrepreneurial journey as a mm. nutritionist? Nutri My definition? Nutritionist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> definition of success. Well, at this moment, my definition would be having like better health outcomes for my clients. You know, getting out on the phone with them after, you know, two weeks and hearing they're having more energy, they're sleeping better, like they're just enjoying life more. Like it just that's makes me feel successful. <laughs> if you could define like a single instant though that you're like, I know I'm successful, what would that require? Mm. And maybe not just in your professional life, maybe in your personal life as well. Like, what are kind of those, like, boxes you're looking to check? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, aside from, like, professional, I think. Or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of the boxes that I would check. This should be an easy, easy response. It's a tough question for a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it, having a solid like who you hang out with in your community yeah um knowing that you feel like confident and you know people have your back and you trust them that's always a good place like a you always feel good when you're at that place you know if something something happens and you know you have your team tribe whatever you want to call it so you feel like you don't here. have that yet oh i do okay i guess i feel successful then <laughs> I don't know. Great. You feel successful already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, my personality, I'm so like into like the day to day and the next week, looking at my calendar, what do I have? Like, I guess that's the thing I could work on is, all right, what would define success? Like next step? Like, yeah. I don't know. I need to think about that as the year's coming to a close. That would be a good reflection question. Are there any limitations that you deal with or have dealt with? Oh, in the past? Limitations. Um, time. <laughs> is that everyone's limitation? Just... Is that something that causes you anxiety is time? It does for me, for sure. Feeling, yeah, feeling overwhelmed like you have so much to do. And, I mean, I, I have pretty good boundaries around it. Like, I'm pretty structured with, like, my sleep. Like, I need, I will get to bed at like nine to 10 because then I, I know I have to get outside the next morning or to go do my workout. It makes me feel good. Yes. I have 1 million things on my plate, but this is kind of what I try to teach my clients too. You have to have your boundaries and you have to have your non-negotiables because if you don't take care of yourself, then you can't take care of others and be there to, in whatever capacity is needed. But was that answering your question? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, what's something, yeah, sorry. let's follow up with that. What's yes. something that you do now that you didn't do before that you wish you did before, earlier? Something I do now that I wish I did earlier? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe a habit or, you know, uh -huh. could be anything. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Or something you wish you knew, like, early in your career or just in your life. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think putting yourself out there and making new connections and meeting new people, um, like things like this, 
you know, I work for myself, work from home, and I'm trying to do, you know, collaborate more with people. And I wish I knew that earlier. I feel like I could, you know, be a little bit even more successful now. So, yeah. Was it scary making that leap in the beginning, like into, you know, producing income off, you know, your own mm -hmm. venture? Was that yeah. like a tough leap for you in the? Yeah, no, I remember being, so when I was interning, I was also um, kind of, well, not kind of, I was health coaching. I was helping this doctor kind of take on some of her clients. Um, and so that was like my first like one-on-one -on -one with clients and I was really nervous. And then I thought, all right, when I start my own business, it's all going to be me. You know, it's all going to be on me. Um, so that was a little, you know, kind of like imposter syndrome sort of feeling like, am I, do I know enough to start my own? Can I help people? But then once you start talking, helping people, you have one client, you have 10, you have 50, you just feel that confidence and you don't know, you don't know till you start. And I think a lot of people could learn from that is just put one foot in front of the other. Like you don't need to know how you're going to get, how you're going to get there, how you're going to make a million bucks or whatever it is, like whatever you want to do. Um, financially, whatever like, your goal is, you don't have to know how you're going to get there. It's just you just take what comes at you and keep running. It seems to be a reoccurring theme or a pattern with like a lot of our guests is they have that like kind of fear of the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. from the beginning. How did you kind of deal with that psychologically like and make the leap into the deep end? Because obviously mm -hmm. um, it was the right decision. It, and I think for yeah. most people that do leap into you know again the deep end and like face their fears and get out of that comfort zone it usually ends up prosperous for them yeah but it's there's a lot of people that will never get past that stage yeah like, and they succumb to those limitations internal limitations mm -hmm. how did you like build the confidence to um pursue ahead mm -hmm. well i think the more uncomfortable things you put yourself in other things just get easier um and that's what I begin to like learn about myself. And I listen to a lot of like self help things, like podcasts, books, that those sort of topics. If I'm struggling in a certain situation or I want to learn more about something, whether it's health or um, I don't know, like relationship building, like communication skills, like I'll just like. I'll just do a deep dive and try to learn more about it. Um, but one tool that really helped me because with the whole like an imposter syndrome, um, I would jot down in like a journal a couple things that are like specifically like working well to help kind of rewire and reframe my brain. Um, because, and I kind of teach my clients some of this too. Our, our brains are always looking for like, the threats in our environment and that like negativity can really bring you down and can make you doubt yourself so that's one practice that when I started my business in like 2019 I was pretty religious about like okay let's show my brain evidence that I am doing well and I'm thriving and that energy really shifted and I swear ever since then I've been like very busy um and haven't looked back. I don't do the practice as much anymore. But if I feel myself yeah. slipping and such, like, um, I'll get back to it. And I, I do something similar. But do you know anything about, like, yeah. Joe Dispenza? Yes. Do you like him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's, like, how... Do you like him? Yeah, I do. Like, you know, I think it's interesting how he talks about, or, like, kind of the fundamental... I've, fundamental thing that I've learned from him is, like, your personality is created by your thoughts mm -hmm. and your personality defines your personal reality so when people want to change their reality but keep the same like personality and identity mm -hmm. it's impossible like you have to be committed to shifting that identity yeah um and changing the way that you think and if you're a negative person like yeah creating like positivity within your life within your own thoughts within your language before you can shift that personality to change yep. the way your outcomes are i mean that's kind of what prompted my little sure. journal a refight frame was joe dispenza yes really <laughs> yeah because no i mean his big thing yeah is your thoughts control your reality and your biology so of course my brain going more like sciencey like how do i um optimize even 
like my health is starts with your thoughts. Yeah. It's yeah. very interesting how like, you know, the implications of what he's saying is you can basically control your health through mm -hmm. like, yeah, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like which is like pretty profound in the mental health space. And yeah. Yeah, what do you think of that? I mean valid or definitely. I mean there's placebo trials and yeah. people get better. To go. That's what his book, he he recites a lot of those like studies. Yeah. Right? Which book um did you read? I read um Becoming Superhuman. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was that his second book or his first one? I read No clue. Yeah. Um You Are the Placebo is the book where he tells of his story of how he broke his back and then you know, he was gonna have to have multiple back surgeries, never walk again, and how he healed himself through his thoughts. Yeah, it's pretty crazy <laughs> how like your And then he became a neuroscientist and your internal derives that external reality. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. I don't have any science to back it, but just through my own like anecdotal yeah. experiences. Yeah. Um, to circle back a little bit on the health, I think like two super hot topics um, right now or trends are one, fasting, mm -hmm. and two, ice baths. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the two of those things? I think they're both great, um, but case by case. Um, so fasting is there's different like versions of that right so you could not eat just drink water for 24 hours 72 hours or whatnot and then there's like the 16 8 where you're not eating for the 16 hours and then you're eating within an eight hour window um and there's benefits to it if you're trying to lose weight i mean it's a way of caloric restriction um and then secondarily it helps with recovery because if you're giving your body, your digestive system a break from having to, a lot of energy goes towards digesting. If you're eating constantly, grazing all day, late night snacking, waking up in the morning, eating, like if, you're, if your digestive system is constantly having to work, resources aren't spent elsewhere in the body to help heal. So it is a good way to help with recovery and healing um, and to help with your like gut health because it gives your digestive system finally a break too so when I have clients do certain protocols to help balance like their microbiome or fix some type of bug that's in their gut or whatnot um I'll often use like some fasting to help kind of reset but people that may not be that may not be um appropriate for is like women are a little more sensitive because their hormones fluctuate every week um so whereas men they're just a straight line their hormones are the same um until they become a certain age it goes, declines a little bit but certain times of a female cycle you may not want to because it's stressful for the body in your luteal phase so there's certain ways you can kind of shift fasting with like cycling um and then ice baths um ice baths are great i think it's a good way to help boost dopamine throughout the day um build your stress tolerance is my favorite reason why um because as i mentioned before like doing uncomfortable things life just gets easier yeah and i have to say uh i'm not the best at doing ice bath that's very very hard for me like i love doing sauna like a hard workout you know other things i'll do that's hard <laughs> but for some reason it's just like i i hate it but i love it so what I do you hate about need, it i need someone to tell just me just a shock it's just hard. It's just hard for me to breathe, but I know I'm like, okay, then that's the hardest things that we really need to do more and lean into. Have you so. ever used the Wim Hof method before doing an ice bath? Before? Yeah, or before and through it. I thought you were supposed to do it during the ice bath. The Wim Hof. Like his breathing? Yeah. I don't know. I've always done it like I'll do one round before getting in, and then my second and third rounds are when I'm in, and... It like oh, com it here. completely <laughs> takes the coldness away. Like uh -huh. my mind's completely like yeah. on the breathing, uh -huh. and uh, makes it way easier. Okay, I'll have to see. You're more of an expert with that than than I. So. Give it a try. But I also yeah. am kind of like on the other side. I'm like, okay, is it like super healthy to um, like make your brain think that you're <laughs> in a like life threatening situation every single morning? You do it every morning. No, definitely not. Oh, okay. Definitely not, but some people do. Oh, yeah. Some people are like, you know. Yeah. I'm sure you have a lot of adrenaline and dopamine. You have a great mood, but I don't know, like, you know, that could be completely wrong. It seems kind of crazy to, like, yeah. trick your brain into thinking that it's dying every single day um, and putting that fight or flight, like, 
Well, that's the whole thing when I mentioned it's helping to build your stress tolerance. So like stress tolerance, what that means is you're less affected by stressful situations throughout the day because you already went through this stressful situation. Yeah. But it's more in a, of a yeah. adaptive stress. It's like a, a hormetic stress, a good kind of stress. That helps to like train. I keep saying st- train your stress tolerance. So it's good. It's good. You still want to do it for too long. You don't want to do it after like lifting because it can impede. Oh, really? I would think, think that's when most people like do it is. You do it a couple hours after. Oh, okay. Or maybe is it 24 hours? I'm not, like I said, I'm not the expert on the ice bath thing, but. Because like in college when I played lacrosse, you would get in the ice bath after like practice or something. So that's not a good um practice. I think that's been De- debunked. Yeah. Interesting. Do you yeah. meditate at all? Um, Here and there. That's on my need to get better list. You know Yes. Is there any like. I do like my own version of it. Like I walk a lot outside with my dog. <laughs> I just like being outside. And um, I I don't always, I typically listen to like an audiobook or a podcast, but on days where I'm like, oh my gosh, my brain's on overload. Like I talk to so many people and I'll just not listen to anything. Don't bring your phone and just kind of focus on your surrounding and your immediate like the sounds, the trees, just yeah. observing things. And that's kind of a way just to bring yourself back to the present. So that's kind of my mini version of meditating, you know. And sometimes before bed, I'll do like a, a little meditation on my app. But I need to get back into that. I just got introduced this week to like walking meditations mm-hmm. where you mm-hmm. fixate your intention instead of on the breath. Well, I guess you're still kind of on the breath, but you fixate your attention on the contact point between your feet and the ground oh. as you're walking. Um, and try to drive your attention on that, which is, like, pretty cool. Yeah. Do you meditate? Every single day. Probably why you're so good at the ice bath. Uh, I'm not that good at it. Your breath is <laughs> in sync. The breath is, like, so fascinating to me, like, really how powerful it is. Like, yeah. it's, like, limitless, the implications for me, like, what you can achieve just by, like, consciously mm-hmm. breathing. Mm-hmm. Like, throughout a workout when it's, like, things are difficult yeah. or anything's difficult, like, just putting that attention on the breath, mm-hmm. like tenfold increases what the possibilities are that your body can achieve yeah you get much more out of whatever you're doing is there any reason behind that or is there well when you're focusing on your breath taking like the deeper inhales you're taking in more oxygen so your cells are better saturated with oxygen and perform better interesting yeah all these things are like little anecdotal experiences intuitively i feel like work but i don't have any like real backing so it's interesting to have someone like you here um, that can put like some pragmatic thoughts mm-hmm. beyond, uh, you know, the intuitive beliefs. But yeah, if people want to, you know, are interested in talking to you more or want to um, utilize your practice or want to learn mm-hmm. more about what you do, where can they find you? On Instagram, AK Functional Nutrition. Okay. Our website, um, akfunctionalnutrition.com. I have a full page of testimonies, my different programs. I have a blog, recipes, and such. So lots of information on there, too. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure people will reach out after uh, watching this. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. All right, guys. That concludes this episode of Shaken Hands. I'm your host, Jack Moran. Uh, Do not hesitate to reach out if you have any more recommendations for guests or questions that you want to be asked on the podcast. But other than that, we'll catch you next time. See ya. Thank you.